Okay, fair enough. Yeah. All right, well, let's get started then, since I don't have uh, very much time to get to a great deal of content. Um, so welcome everybody to the Ansible Track, uh, Content Management Camp 2023. Really glad to have you all here. Uh, for anybody watching the video later, uh, you're very welcome to. Sorry it was you know, later. Um, it's going to be a pretty quick session for me. We're going to go over a bunch of stuff. Uh, and I'm going to, I'm not, I'll go down with you. I'm not going to pull any punches here. Um, so this is going to be, it's it, essentially you guys are my focus group, right? You're here to tell me whether you're seeing what I'm seeing. And hopefully, I'm going to put to you what I think we should do about it and see whether you like it, right? Quickly about me then. My name is Greg Sutcliffe. I have been at Red Hat for a very long time. <laughs> and I am currently one of the community architects at Ansible, along with Carol Chen and Walter Bentley, who hasn't arrived yet. Um, I was a data scientist with Ansible before that, and I still do quite a lot of the data work for the community, so we're going to have some nice graphs. Uh, so four years at Ansible, 10 years at Red Hat, 20 years doing open source. I've got some background here. Uh, that doesn't mean I know all the answers. And the, the reason I put that up is not to say, hey, look at me, I'm amazing, because I'm not. I'm not particularly exceptional. You guys are all exceptional too. And I have some thoughts. I want to see whether you have the same thoughts. So today's agenda is going to be, first of all, it's a state of the community talk, right? So we're going to do past, present, and future. So we're going to have some metrics, we're going to have some plots. What has the last couple of years brought us? We've not been able to do this for a while. And normally we have a much better feedback cycle where we can check in with each other more regularly. That's been pretty tricky recently, right? So what's the last couple of years brought us? Where are we at? Going to then come up to where we're at. I'm going to have a little look at uh, the Ansible community today. I hope your arms are feeling good because I've got some show of hands things I've got in mind. And then I'm going to show you what I think we should do about it. Now I want to stress the I think bit because I am not special other than I get paid to sit and think a lot, which is quite nice. Uh, but I might be wrong, I might be missing something, or I might be spot on. Whatever that is, come and tell me, okay? Come and tell Carol, come and tell Gundalo down here, come and tell any of, of us that are working on this stuff, whether we're on the right track or we've missed something, because it's important, right? So let's start with some trends. Uh, let's start with some past data. This, we can look at this in a few different ways, right? We can look at the users, we can look at contributors, we can look at meetups, we can look at all sorts of things. I'm gonna start with users. I'll go through these for you. So firstly, uh, come on, come on, come on. So, so when I think about users, it's hard to measure users, right? It's open source. Nobody has to tell us that they're using our software. That's a fundamental problem with measuring open source is you have no idea who's using it. But we can try and get some trends. And the idea is if they're all going in kind of the same direction, then we can be reasonably confident that they are a real trend. Okay, so we don't care about the raw numbers, we care about the trends. So on the top left, uh, I'm sorry, the, the titles are quite small on this slide. Um, documentation, that's unique visitors to our documentation, docs.ansible.com. Uh, so that's over the last couple of years, and you can see the trend. On the right, we have Reddit. So this is the number of people raising comments on Reddit. I don't look at Reddit subscribers or Twitter subscribers or anything like that because it's monotonic, right? It always goes up because nobody ever unsubscribes. They just stop looking. So this is use useless metrics. Um, and I could go on for an entire talk about useless metrics. But I think comments is not unrealistic, right? particularly as part of a package. Similar to Reddit, down in the bottom left, we have Stack Overflow. This is over pretty much all time. You can see it goes pretty back, all the way back to 2014. So that's people tagging their questions, specifically the questions, not the answers to those questions, as Ansible related. So we get quite a lot of those. And then finally, possibly, the least useful these days is the mailing lists. So uh, how, who actually knows we've got mailing lists? <laughs> okay, that's more than I thought, I have to admit. There are seven mailing lists for Ansible, uh, as well as a couple of GitHub discussion boards. Um, but you can see where the peak of the traffic on the mailing list was, right? 2015. <laughs> now, I don't know about you, I don't like these graphs. None of them are going up. And that bothers me. As a community architect, I cannot stand here and see that and not do something about it. I'm not doing my job if I don't, right? I don't like this at all. So that's users. What about contributors? Maybe maybe, maybe it's fine, right? I mean, let's have a look at contributors. So this, these graphs need a little bit of nuance. I have a definition for an active contributor. This is a little bit more than you raised an issue once and a little bit less than you're a member of the core team. It's somewhere in the middle, right? And if you're interested in the exact definition, come see me at the booth afterwards because I don't have time to go into it. But just try and bear with me that this is a principled definition and I don't meet it, right? Despite the fact that I'm made by Red Hat, I don't feature in these graphs because I don't have enough activity on GitHub. So, 
We're not messing about. But there's still, and I hope you can see this, 851, at the time I calculated this a couple of weeks ago, 851 active contributors across the entire of the Ansible ecosystem. That's enormous. I cannot stress how ridiculously huge that is. For those of you who don't know, back in 2020, before we split out the collections to their own repos and everything was in Ansible Ansible, we were the eighth largest project on GitHub. So yes, we have a lot of contributors. But again, it was 900 a year ago. <laughs> this is still not a good trend. You can split this out. You can look at a specific number of repos where there's 470 GitHub repos that are indexed for that top left graph. But if we just look at some, so Collections lives in the Ansible Collections organization on GitHub. That's got 400 active contributors, which is where we see obviously the largest chunk. I, I should stress, by the way, that these graphs don't include staff members. So Red Hat's not included on this because we're paid to do that. So again, 412, okay, well, like with docs, we saw it's pretty flat, right? So 418 down to 412, plausibly flat. This one down here is, I've used core, that's a bad habit. It's specifically Ansible, Ansible. I don't want to imply that core don't do work in other repos, right? But that's Ansible, Ansible, specifically. And then this one is DevTools, which is the only one bucking the trend. So big applause for Soren and the rest of the DevTools team for building that because that's got some momentum to it. But it's the only one, right? So across users, across contributors and GitHub, we're seeing the same trend. What else? We could look at chat, right? Now, for those of you who know my history, you'll know that I caused some waves in the last year or so by bringing Matrix into the equation along with IOC for our chat space, right? So how does that look? Well, there's a few good things here. Firstly, on the, I'm going to start on the right this time. This is the trend in users. Now, it's, it's less wiggly because what I've done is try and smooth it out and get rid of some of the variation. This is a report for myself and I just literally stole the graph from it last night. So this is the trend with some of the variation taken out, but it's largely positive. Matrix users per day, that's people saying things, not just idling in the channel, has been going up over the last year. Great. My project, my last project was a Zotero. Um, by comparison, the IRC trend is not happy, but I don't find that a great surprise. What I do want to point out is that if you add those two graphs together, you get this one. And the trend, again, not good. So, with about a third of my time used up, perfect. This is where I, where I see us today. We've got a whole bunch of metrics on a whole bunch of topics, and none of them, one exception, thank you, sorry, is positive. That's not good. Now, every project has growth, maturity, and decline. This is natural, it's evolution of everything. But I don't think we're in the decline phase yet. The mission of Ansible to automate things is not over. There is still a lot to do. I'm seeing nodding already. So if that's the case, why are these numbers all going down? Now, I expect some evolution, right? As a project matures, you, get, you start to get less contributions, you start to get more users, but the users aren't going up. And if we've not reached that bit yet, well, the contributors should still be going up. The only reason it should all be going down is if we're done, and we're not. So, standing here as a community architect, I say, something is wrong. What could it be? And so, I'm going to try and figure out what it could be. Now, before I do this, I have to be pretty critical of some things here. So, I want to say one thing really really loudly and really clearly. This is not about people. I don't believe anybody sets out to try and kill things in these communities, and it largely doesn't work if you do, because open source communities are really good at working around those kind of people. This isn't about people. No one is at fault. It is not about you did something wrong or you did something wrong. No. It's simply that we have to know where we are if we are going to move forwards. Okay? We have to be really honest and frank with ourselves and say, where are the problems? What can we do about it? That's what this is about. So, take a sip. I want to do an exercise with you. I'm going to put up six things that I believe to be true about pretty much any open source community. Not specifically Ansible, just in general. What makes a good open source community? And I'm just going to go through those and let you know how I think about them. And then we're going to score ourselves. I'm going to do some show hands, and we're going to see how well Ansible does, in your opinion, on those six things, and see if you agree with me. So here's my tenets of the community. First of all, you must have a strong mission. If you don't have a strong mission, you don't, can't even agree the problem you're trying to solve. 
I think that one's pretty straightforward. I don't know that I need to put a lot of time into explaining that one. But if you don't have it, people don't stick around, or you fracture, you end up trying to solve different problems. It, it, you've got to have a clear definition of what it is you're trying to solve. The next is transparency. If you don't have good transparency, you miss out uh, generally on a lot of good wisdom that's out there. The wisdom of the crowd is a thing. We know from research that if you put non-experts in a group, they make better decisions than just experts on their own. But if you don't include everybody in the discussion and have good transparent discussions, you can't have that, right? You've got to have tolerance. You've got to, you've got to learn from that wisdom. If you don't listen to dissenting voices who don't agree with you in a polite way, then you can't learn from that wisdom. You might be hearing it now, which you weren't with the transparency problem, but you're still not really gaining anything from it. And I will be clear, this is not about trolls. We have good code of conduct, we can deal with those people. But the minute we've dealt with the really bad people, we should be listening to the rest, even if we don't all agree. Right? We can form a consensus from that. The next one is decentralization. It should be free or close to free to try things out. Across the banner of a project, if somebody sees a problem that needs to be solved that is related to the mission of the project, it should be as close to free as possible to try. Now, there may well be some little steps to make it more official once it's proven to work and there's interest from the rest of the community, but you ought to be able to try. You should have fair authority. Everybody should play by the same rules. I don't know that I need to add a lot to that. It just seems pretty obvious to me. But, you know, if you don't, it's toxic, right? It's, it's going to really cause a two-tier system and it's not going to end well. And you may even end up with forks and things if people get suitably annoyed. And finally, it must be as close to free entry as possible. I see a lot of projects doing contributor licensing agreements and things like this. And I think, mm, I know why you're doing it but it's an extra barrier to entry, right? And there are, there are various other ways in which you can make it hard for people to join in. The lower you can make it for people to join in, the more people are gonna join in. Okay, so those are my six. Who's got, got your arms ready? Here we go. So, here's my first one, strong mission. Who thinks Ansible has a strong mission? Wow, okay, I thought that would be the easy one. <laughs> I see probably about five hands up. That tells me a problem. I, I thought we may be doing okay. If you look on PyPy, we say we are radically simple automation. And I think maybe the word simple is getting a bit of an attack at the moment. But beyond that, the radical bit and the automation bit are probably still fair. But okay, you disagree. I'm glad to know that. Actually, one of my colleagues who can't be here today, Andre, raised this with our team just this week, saying, do we need to go back and look at our mission statement? Um, so maybe we do. Okay, good to know. Okay, decentralization. Who thinks we're good at decentralization? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Most of the room. Okay, I would agree with that. I would actually agree with that. There is a little bit of gatekeeping. I think sometimes that's necessary. But you can go and get a new matrix room, spin up a new GitHub organizer repo and start trying things out. And if people like it, they'll join in, right? So I don't think we're too bad at that one. What about free entry? Okay, we got maybe a third of the room, maybe a quarter of the room there. I think we're terrible at this. <laughs> I'll be quite honest with you. How many projects do you know of, of our scale, that don't have a community website? There's Ansible.com is the product, right? Um, we have Ansible.com slash community today, and that's it. After that, it goes off into individual GitHub repos, individual chat rooms, mailing lists, GitHub discussion boards. If you, as a new person, come to me today and say, I want to contribute to Ansible, I have no idea where to send you, without asking a lot more questions about what you're interested in. So I think we're pretty terrible at giving a low barrier to entry. And the key thing to remember here is open source has grown massively. If we can't make it easy for people to come join us, they'll just go contribute somewhere else. Uh, assuming that, that's the, that they're just looking for things to get involved in. If they're just super keen on Ansible, they'll figure it out. That's why we have such a big user base. But we've got to make that easier. What about, oh, I'll give that away, transparency. One person, okay. <laughs> I, I, I don't think we do, and I say we here specifically to Red Hat, and no, I'm aware that I'm sitting here criticizing the people who pay me, but that's my job. <laughs> Sometimes we have to tell the company things they don't want to hear. I, I know there are decisions being made in private, and you know it too, right? Look at the, look at, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to specifically pick an example from Core. I don't want Core watching on the video to think that I'm singling them out, because I'm not. But we know that decisions get made within an organization, right? And I don't think that's healthy. Now, what we do about it is a different debate, <laughs> but there are definitely parts of the project where decisions get made in private. 
you could say, I, I remember there's a, there's a great book and one of the lines in that says, one person going off to try an experiment in a dark corner, that's an experiment. Two people to go off in a dark corner, that's a conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> and I kind of buy it. it, it we, we naturally get suspicious, right? I'd much rather we have bright sunlight on all of our decision making. I'm not saying those decisions need to turn out any differently to the way they do. I'm sure it's all above board, but we should be more transparent about it. What about tolerance and inclusion? That was one of my points. Who thinks we're good at that? Okay, decent, most of the room, yeah. I would say we're pretty good. The only thing I would add to it, we're good at our code of conduct, we're good at our, um, figuring out how to include people, making sure voices are heard. We've moved to a much more asynchronous discussion model in the community topics, whereas it was chat meetings before. But that one thing about private meetings bothers me because you can't include people if they don't even know the meetings are happening. So that bugs me a little bit, but it's not terrible. And finally, fair authority. Wow, <laughs> I thought as much. Nobody put their hands up for that one. And I kind of agree, I just put question mark on this. I'm like, wow, this is hard to do. What I would say is mostly we're reasonable. One exception is I'm not entirely convinced that we expect everybody to play by the same rules around uh, contributions specifically to GitHub. But, like, the processes are a lot easier if you're a Red Hatter. Um, that's not great. It's not, there's not many places, but there are definitely some that I would like to see as improved. Okay, thank you for, for participating in that. It tells me that I'm not far off the mark. Um, so I want to talk about the themes that have come up as we talked about that, and I think there's a couple. The first one is fragmentation. Ansible has grown massively over the 11 years that it's been around. Um, we are enormous. There are 17 projects on the ecosystem page, 470 GitHub repos, 32 chat rooms, 130 meetup groups, last time I checked, uh, eight mailing lists, about at least four active GitHub discussion boards, zero websites, unfortunately. Um, but we've grown big, but we've grown apart. And it's okay to a point, but it's starting to hurt. When we look at the discussions that touch on multiple parts of the project, they start to fail. Uh, we have situations, and again, I want to come back to what I said, it's nobody's fault, I'm not blaming anyone, but when you have a situation where a discussion happens in one place, it needs the input of the other place, but they didn't get involved for whatever reason, it's not like, it could be that they weren't pinged, it could be that they didn't respond, it doesn't really matter. The point is that that then falls apart, and you end up in a situation where people get frustrated. In our team, we always say it's okay to disappoint people, it's not okay to surprise people. And when you get to a point where someone sends a PR to another part of the project and it gets rejected completely, because the decisions and discussions didn't happen at an early enough stage, that's a surprise, and that's a bad thing. So I think we've got a problem where we need to have better communication between the right people, so that we can get, again, come back to that wisdom of the crowd topic, come back to that idea that We've got to reduce conflict, reduce surprise, make it easier to participate, right? I mean, that free entry tenet that I put up there, we can't do that if we're not making it easy to get involved and just get started, right? Find that one place and be like, I've just got to ask a question. Where do I, is anybody else interested in this? How do I solve that? We can't do that today. So, before I go on to the next bit, and while I take a sip of water, would anybody strongly, I'm okay with small objections, we can talk about those later, but does anyone think I'm completely off base here? Wonderful. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. Okay, so for the benefit of the video, nobody put their hands up. So, let's talk strategy. We've done the past, we've done the present, let's talk about the future. First of all, part zero, this is all to be confirmed. I am not special. I do not get to make the rules. You do. And you on what we need to do. So there will be a public discussion. But right here today we have a focus group and I would encourage any of you to come and talk to us at the booth. On Wednesday I will have a session on this topic where we can go into more detail on what I'm planning or what I think we should plan. Uh, so if any of this interests you and you're around on Wednesday, come and talk to me. Come talk to me before Wednesday or just wait for the public discussion and join in there. And if we've missed anything here, come and tell us. I wrote this up internally over the last month or so and circulated it because, again, we are quite still quite internally focused and I need to make sure that people internally get it so that we don't ask a question and then ignore the answer, which is awful. I hate doing that. So I feel like we can make this happen if the community agrees it's a good idea. And I stress the if because I don't get to make the rules. So there's two parts to what I want to do. I've got five minutes to tell you about it. 
The first thing is that I think the community today has no voice. That cohesion, that one way of looking at things, that umbrella of the Ansible thing does not exist. We do not have the website, we do not have that place to get involved, to get started. We have no blog, for example. If you want to put a blog on Ansible.com, that is extremely difficult to achieve, even if you are inside Red Hat, never mind if you are outside of it. There is no place for the community to talk about what it wants to achieve. That strong mission that we talked about is hard to articulate when we don't have a place to do it. And one page on Ansible.com slash community is not sufficient. And moreover, the naming is a problem, right? We've got the same name upstream and downstream, and this has been a problem since forever, and we've got to stop sticking our head in the sand and do something about it. So I think, well, I've just said all these things, I'm not pressed buttons. Uh, so yeah, we don't have any kind of identity for the community separate from the product. And that irritates me. So I think we should build a new website. <laughs> Who thinks that's a good idea? Yes, the whole room, thank you very much. I have preliminary approval from internal to do this. Um, so, it's not clear yet exactly how this is going to fall out, and we'll have to decide exactly what the name will be, and I don't want it to be too far away from Ansible. We're not going to do a whole kind of complete renaming thing and call it something else entirely, because no. So, there's a debate to be had on how to do this, but in principle, this is quite doable, and I think the next steps on that, it seems like most people are in favor. Obviously, we still have to have the debate with the wider community, and we're just a focus group. Assuming that goes through, set up a working group, get started on it. My vision for this is your standard community process, which is a GitHub repo with a static site generator. And everybody can participate in building that thing who is interested in doing so. And of course, Red Hat will be interested and will be a big participant in that. But we need to get back to this, this idea that we are part of the community. So, static site generator, built on GitHub, everybody gets to participate. And we will need a working group for figuring out the design, because I'm a terrible designer and you don't want me anywhere near that. So that's part one, that's the easy part. <laughs> now the controversial part. I also think we need to tackle the fragmentation. Uh, we've talked a little bit about how big Ansible is, how many spaces there are, how places you could get involved. I don't want to be a planner. I don't think our team at the, in the community team at Ansible, uh, we think of ourselves internally, we describe ourselves as the community platform. That is that the rest of the teams can build on us to get community stuff done. That doesn't mean we get to say what happens, right? The projects know what they want to get done for the large part. We're interested in the bigger picture here, right? So I don't want to see us as a planner, but I do want to see us as a regulator. I think, uh, think of a city. You don't necessarily need to tell people where to build their schools and their fire stations and their supermarkets, but you do need to make sure they all get power and water and traffic lights and things. That's the job of the community team. And I think that's something we need to figure out. This is for us to figure out. But then we also need to think about support for users. Right now, if you want support on an issue, you've got to pick one of the 470 GitHub repos to go and open an issue on, or you go into our user support chat room and join the firehose stream of traffic that is that. And let's face it, chat's not the best place if you've got a massive playbook that you're trying to get help with. I'd like us to have something a bit more long for, oh, and of course there's the mailing list, but you saw the graph for the mailing list, so no, nah, that's not going to happen. So, also, architecture decisions. Going back to that example I illustrated earlier where two groups just didn't get talking early enough. Well, let's fix that, right? Let's have a place to do that, because that will help. <laughs> it will absolutely reduce surprise. Okay, maybe not disappointment, but that's something that comes with working on software. So we should fix that. And finally, one that's a subtle point, but right now, today, we don't own our archives. Either they are mailing lists that are on Google Groups, and Google Groups might go in any time. Google's tried to kill it multiple times. Or the chat logs and meeting logs are on fedoraproject.org because we use a meeting bot that is hosted by them. Where is the Ansible archive of Ansible's own history of the decisions that it has taken and the discussions that it has had? Nowhere. So let's fix that as well. And to do all of these things, you can do it all in one go. You do it with a forum. Now, I know not everybody loves forums, but I do. <laughs> and I think they can solve a lot of these problems. Um, I'm running out of time, I have less than a minute left. If you're interested in how I think this solves all of these problems, come and see me, because I absolutely think it does. Um, specifically, it will bring users and developers closer together. Now there's some nuance here. Some people are worried about Firehose traffic. We already get 10,000 issues a year on Git and Ansible alone. Um, so yes, there's some management to figure out, but wisdom of the crowd, we need to hear from users. I think we've gotten a little distanced from traditional use cases and how that maps onto what we're building today. We've got to figure out how to bring that discussion back together. And it will bring these groups together, right? Right now, you cannot add a group across GitHub organizations. So if I wanted to add AWX 
uh, to bring them in on discussion about something else going on in community topics. I can't do it if I don't replicate the AWX group into a different GitHub org. That's a horrible maintenance burden. With something central, we can do that better. And, of course, we can import all of our archives, which will work just fine, because I've tested it. So, I'm out of time. I will ask for your feedback. If you have anything uh, and you want to send it long form, then this is the team email address. We will happily listen and reply to you, probably by me, but not always. Um, you can come and chat with us. This is the sociable uh, room, which is, I, this, I put this up here because I haven't created a working group for this yet. Uh, but for now, come and chat with us in social and we'll take it from there. Um, or you can message me directly if you're, if you're more comfortable with that. If you want to be private, that's absolutely fine. I will keep your confidence and you can message me there. Okay, thank you very much. Do we have time for questions or are we moving on to the next one? Yeah, right at time. Mm. Okay, yeah, quick show of hands. Who thinks forum's a good idea? Most of the room. Okay, I'm pleasantly surprised. Thank you very much. <laughs> Do we have time for any questions, Carol? I didn't hear, sorry. Uh, we're, we're right at time. So we're out of time. Yeah. Okay, in that case, come see me at the booth and I'll happily answer all your questions. Or wait for the public discussion while I write 4,000 word blog posts. <laughs>